views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. The following audio is via a Skype call. Get ready for Mystic Living Radio, deep spiritual wisdom, practical advice with EJ, Eliyahu, Gian. This mystical Kabbalist, spiritual advisor, coach, and teacher ignites the airwaves with dynamic engagement, rational conversations, and special techniques to chart your soul's path. Known for his keen sense of humor, contagious smile, and extensive esoteric wisdom, EJ translates deep spiritual wisdom into practical advice to empower you to live your happiest, most fulfilled existence. During this hit show, you experience a deeper understanding of yourself, unveil past life mistakes, and remove blockages to cultivate a truly fulfilling future. Now, here are your dynamic hosts on Mystic Living Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Pat, and I am here with Eliyahu Gian. Oh, and we like to we like to call him EJ, but I'm going to call him Eliyahu. Oh, what a great show we have. Now, listen, today's show is one of these shows where I cannot wait to have a conversation with him. Day of Judgment. Now, what happens when we think about the Day of Judgment? We're going to discuss what the coming of the Messiah means and what we can do on a daily basis to make our lives better. And I love this conversation because it is about what we can do to make our lives better and therefore create a better world. Now, you know, how do we go about that? That's where Eliyahu comes in. For nearly three decades, he has been a mystical Kabbalist, spiritual advisor, coach, teacher. He has been working with men and women. He has been working with businesses, helping people understand what can be done, what it takes to create an amazing life. And the thing that we get missing most is that spiritual connection. But what happens when you connect with him? What happens when you sit down and work with him? Whether you're a business that's not really sure why you're not growing the way you think or an individual that seems to be stuck, you're going to find out today what it means to say yes to an extraordinary life, what it means to say yes to creating a life every day, every day that gets you closer and closer and closer to that place of peace. How does he know this? You're going to hear about this. Growing up in Israel, Eliyahu lived in a traditional Jewish home, except for the fact that both of his parents came from generations of mystics. Yes, people with great esoteric power. So he doesn't just work with you from a textbook perspective, but he works from that place of mysticism, from looking at astrology, from looking at intuition, from looking at, you know, the energies of people that have gone before, people that have passed on, you know, whether it is understanding his first experience of mysticism with his grandfather or an hour ago working with one of his incredible clients, this is something that he is bringing to us, all of us, on Transformation Talk Radio. Why? Because we all want to go next to that place where we're living extraordinary lives and then we're given back what we've learned. So today, are you ready for hearing about how Day of Judgment happens every day? Elio, it's great. It's great to have you here. What a great topic. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for opening to listen uh about the Day of Judgment, and it's a pretty scary subject, but I hope I'll be able to make it clear for everybody and make everybody live happy and uh, certain about their future. Yeah, well, we can thank Hollywood for bringing Day of Judgment, Judgment Day to the forefront on the big screen for all of us to remind us 
of what we think it is and what we know about it so very little. Um, you know, I want to talk with you a minute about something I said in introducing you, and I, I want to take a minute to talk about it. Um, you come from a family, uh, generations of mystical uh, genealogy, let's say. Mm-hmm. What was it like for you to have that mystical awakening with your grandfather, Abraham? I, I, we haven't talked about that, but, you know, this is so much a part of who you are. My, my grandfather, we used to spend uh, the Jewish family time with him on Passover, and I used to see him on the summer. So during the week, my grandfather used to have a line of people who's uh, coming to remove curses and black magic. That's what is, was his specialty. Mm-hmm. And black, we used to black people and remove... Uh, magic uh, that they has been bothered them in the area of money or a relationship or got to be help. So that power, when I asked him if he would sit and teach me, he used to tell me, you already have it in you. I want you to make an effort to study and then start helping people. And uh, I remember when I started in a very young age and uh, I didn't know I had the power until my grandfather started talking to me about it, and until I realized it was on my father's side, uh, that was my mother's father. So it, you're growing up with the idea of knowing things. And uh, I remember a pretty young age, I'm talking about age uh, 10, 10 and a half, that uh, started having a lot of dreams and messages. Uh, of things that I didn't want to believe that I was chosen to do a work, uh, I tried to push it away. So it was kind of scary. It was just a kid. And the voices keep telling me, uh, you know, uh, you are the one. And, of course, the ego. I mean, you know, what yeah. is you are the one? I'm just yeah. a little kid. You are the one, and we chose you because you're supposed to uh, hand up that chaos yeah, that's happening in the world at one point, they even show me the end of days, like how it's going to look like with the details from a young age. So it was yeah. very scary. Wow. I tried to push myself away from it, and I tried to be like a normal boy going out, body, to make sure that I'm not the one. But wherever I would go, that picture came again from other mm-hmm. people. So it was very scary until I was willing to accept the responsibility when I met my master of spirituality, Master Kabbalist, and uh, he appointed to me, and he told me, you know, you've been chosen, and you should not refuse that. And basically, when my wife and me opened the organization, um, and step by step, we started helping more and more people. Wow, yeah. And then, last night, I did the Blue Meditation, which is opening your blue chakra intuition and many people online and, and many people here uh, went through some transition which was unbelievable going from chakra to chakra oh. and all they're all calling us and how they are now it is time to announce yourself it is time to tell people who you are and I don't know if I have the words to say what I am or what I'm yeah. supposed to be doing yeah. But I will say one thing. It is coming, and whatever we saw in Florida or whatever we saw in um, other places, there is so much chaos, whatever it is, the Middle East or Europe, or there is so much Texas, Mexico. You know, when we talk about the Day of Judgment, it's written in the Bible that there will be two groups. And the Bible said that there is one group it will be the best time for them. And there is one group, it will be a disaster for them. Yes. Now, what yes. defines what define who is who uh, is two things. It's a matter of your consciousness and a matter of what you follow and who you follow. And I just hope for the people to uh, either work with me or follow me, whatever you choose to call it. So I can guide them and help them in a way that uh, they will understand the whole concept of what Jesus meant 
mm-hmm. was Moses, Buddha, Muhammad. You know, because there is something going through the universe right now uh, with me and another 35 people, I think. And I hope that they will get it and they will meet us. And uh, so we can really make sure that chaos is not happening with them. That's yeah. all what I can yeah, you know, this today we're talking about, you know, this idea of uh, Day of Judgment and what it's come to mean. And and I'm not just talking about Day of Judgment in terms of where we're living today, but I, I really love what you said about for some people, they're having extraordinary moments in life. For other people, especially I'm thinking about my family, uh, my friends in, in Florida, they're not having that. But the point really is to really take a look at, and and you are brilliant at this, is we get to call into ourselves, into this human, into this earth skin we have. We get to discover mysticism as well. And you are amazing at working with people in that way. Um, I want to take a short break and we come back. What? does the coming of the Messiah mean? What does that mean? What have we discovered about it? And what can we discover about it for ourselves? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio. Featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hip call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net for show days and times. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you design a culture that is authentic, innovative, and successful. Learn how to create change with Cultural Brilliance Radio, the DNA of organizational excellence and Claudette Rowley. To learn more or work with Claudette, Visit ClaudetteRowley.com. Disease, one of the most dreaded words in our vocabulary. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know traditionally we have viewed disease as a degenerative process? Disease is better understood when we view it as disease in the human body. Disease means without ease. Health is not merely the absence of disease, it's when every part of the body works together effortlessly. Relaxed and at ease. It's that relaxed state that lets energy flow in waves through and around the entire body. Every organ has an electrical charge, and when overcharged or undercharged, disease occurs. And it is an effort to go through our day. We are able to determine the exact disease of the body and design a specific solution to correct the nutritional imbalance. Contact us at 888 777 4232. That's 888-777-4232. And visit us at maryjanemack.com. Hey, 
Hey, everybody. Welcome back. You know, Mystic Living Radio with Eliao Ujian joining me here today. And, you know, there's something here that is so very important. And what I love about this message is um, what is it we're doing in life and what can we do differently? You know, what is it about the world we live in? What is it about how we can have mystic living, deep spiritual wisdom, and practical advice? Absolutely. Um, You know, EJ, before we jump into this, I want to take a minute, if we could, and talk a little bit about the work you do with other people. And you work with businesses, you work with individuals. So I think this is really important for the world to know what you're doing to help people rise up, regardless of what's going on in their world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the idea is for every person is different. So first, uh, when I meet a person in uh, 11 minutes time, uh, the information about them just download into my soul. So that's a gift that I wish I could give it to others so they could do that. So the reason people hire me, I can walk into any place. In 11 minutes' time, I will download the soul of the person, how many lifetime they are here, what they meant to do. And then mm-hmm. comes the tough part for me, which is the delivery. What do I tell the person? Do I tell them everything? So the answer is, of course, no. But I'm slowly, slowly build them step by step to get to their potential. Now, what does that mean? Potential. Some people want money. Some people relationship issue, abuse relationship. Some people health issue. What do you tell people? What actually you tell people? So mm-hmm. because, as I said before, I was chosen by God, by the above, which I couldn't accept it before, and now I'm accepting all the responsibility to help people, then I'm start using it. So that's mean if I meet the person one on one. That's the last night, a tough call from a lady who's been abused. So she, the husband say she abused him, she's a he abuser, a mess. So how do you know? So basically, you meet the person, and just by looking into their pupil, into their eyes, into their face, reading their face, reading their hand, then reading the soul, and then allowing the soul to talk to me. I don't talk to them. There is a regular conversation with the Liao as you see me, but there is another conversation happening while you don't see it. So I'm actually taking your soul aside, talk to your soul for 11 minutes, while there is another Eliyahu that have a conversation with your body. So that's a unique technique, is a technique of me splitting basically to two and allowing my Messiah side to talk to your soul and then see if there is a possibility to do some change. And then I go back to the body and say to you what I think is going to be a good idea. And that's why there is so much success in people's life. Now, you need to know it's very difficult for people in the beginning to accept it because how come I know about them things that they don't even know about themselves? You know, if um, a lady that, that um, from Toronto many years ago that uh, was keeping lying about her life, you know, it was difficult to go ahead and tell her that she lied because a liar who lie for too long, that they know that you lie. So when the people lie for too long, they are in exile. And the whole idea of bringing out within the person the truth at that moment, that's mm. difficult, difficult, so difficult. So for them, that's the day of judgment. When a liar finds out that he's a liar, that's the day of judgment. But it's actually the coming of the Messiah for them. You know, it's like, depends how you look at it. So that's like I'm giving like, you know, a snap of a little bit of basically what mm-hmm. I'm doing with people. So it's always one-on-one, even like it seems like I'm talking to the group. It always will be one-on-one. Whatever I teach 3,000 people, or if I teach one person, it's exactly the same thing. And the, 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 the idea is not a religion. It's talking to your truth. And the yes. truth is the most powerful thing. You know, yes. because th- this is it. You know, we, we are talking about like, this is it. And people want to try it, you know, as New Yorkers say, the proof is in the pudding. You got to try yes. the pudding. If it tastes good, keep doing it. If it doesn't, then 
Don't do that. You know, that's what I can <laughs> offer people. Yeah. And, you know, part of this, too, is really understanding that, at least for me, um, yeah. you know, I've never been able to take this journey of life and even be here talking to you today by myself. I've always needed help. And that's what you provide. You know, many people always, have always. looked at life and they've looked at religion. And I know I've done this myself. And when yeah. we're thinking about this, we're thinking about, well, wait a minute. I'm waiting for the next coming. I'm waiting yeah. for the Messiah. Yeah. I'm waiting yeah. for my boss to become the Messiah. No, wait, yeah. I'm not waiting for my boss. So maybe I'm waiting for the president to become the Messiah. But, you know, yeah. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And so yeah. what does this mean to wait for the coming <laughs> of the Messiah? <laughs> the one who waits never want to find. The one who search will never find also. That's the secret. Let's say now, let's just play a little game here on the radio. Yeah. Let's yeah. say, let's say, just say, it's good for my ego trip. I'm the Messiah right now talking to you and talking to the people. Do you yeah. think it will be any change? Do you think right now one person who listens to me will call now one million people and think the Messiah is on the radio? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, nobody, we are not in a situation that we understand that the Messiah is here with us. It's a long time ago it appeared, but the revelation of the Messiah is just to with the individual. The day of judgment is the day that you don't feel nothing. We feel nothing. We already have everything we're looking for, but because we're so stuck to looking for that special thing, that special thing, then keep looking. And I'm telling you, you're finding nothing. So I'm not going to depress you. But if you keep looking, you know, there is somebody in the 60s used to be searcher. Everybody was searching and searching. Yeah. And when you tell people that you find something, they know I'm still searching for spirituality. Yeah. Those people never found spirituality because they enjoyed the search engine. They didn't enjoy, they didn't enjoy finding it. You know, people don't want to be their soulmate. They want to search for the soulmate. People don't want to meet the true goal. They want to search for the goal. People are basically love to waste time going on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. How can I waste more time? You know, so here we go. As I say, yeah. let's play this game. I'm the Messiah talking to you. Is everybody, anybody want to pick up the phone and call and get a blessing to all your problems go away? Nothing. Let's do that. Anybody out there want to call in and get a blessing? Let's do this because I was so <laughs> thrilled that we're going to do blessings today. You know, 1 800 930 2819. Would you like to have a blessing? And you know what I love about this? I remember saying to, I, you know, listen, I, I overheard my relatives talking once when I was a kid. Right? You're gonna. This is funny. I, my relatives are talking. Right? I, and I told you yeah. during the play, Catholic, reborn, Southern Baptist, and one yeah. of one of my cousin <laughs> was talking to to uh, my 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 mom, and my cousin yeah. is saying, you know, I I'm lo I'm lost. I can't find God. You know, I I can't. You know, I can And and I just turned around. I said, When did God get lost? You know, is God lost? Exactly. Are we going to call the police exactly. to find him? Uh, you exactly. know, because God's not lost. Nobody. The, the, the idea, the idea. We we enjoy the searching. If yeah. you look at everybody is searching. I mean, everything is about the searching engine. Listen to those words, searching engine. We have thousand channel on TV <laughs> and nothing on TV. You know. Thousand channel with nothing on it because everybody is searching for something. Searching, not enough that now you got the Hulu, Shmulu, Netflix, this, that. Yes. It's never gonna end because nobody wanna find it. Everybody wanna search it, and that's what is missing. So when I go to people, you know, I remember one day in New York, a gentleman come over to me and said, listen, I heard about you. I don't want to believe in you, but I want, to be, I want you to give me a blessing for children. I mm -hmm. said, but you say you don't believe in me. He said, yes, but I believe you have power, but I refuse to believe in what you're doing with spirituality. I said, okay, let me give you a blessing. I'm blessing you to have children. A year after I'm working in New York on 38th Street, those of you who know New York and 7th yeah. Avenue, gentlemen, come over to me. He's in a garment in the city. He kissed me. He said, by the way, we have two children. And we want to thank you. And here is donation for your organization so you can help more people. I said, would you like to join me to study? He said, no, no, no. 
I only believe in your blessing. I said, that's a shame. It's mm. almost like people found me an ill dancer, but they don't want to go for it. They want to search. Mm. Search. The day of judgment is the day that you keep searching. You don't want to find anything. You're searching for a wife or a husband, but you don't want to find a wife or husband. You're searching for money, but you don't want to find the job. That's what people are doing. That's called the day of judgment. So in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, basically mm-hmm. in the Bible, it's talking about Armageddon war. Everybody is knowing about Armageddon war, which is coming from the, from the word Armageddon, meaning the mountain of Megiddo in the northern part of Israel. It also has to do with the words in Aramaic that mean gig, gig mean logic. Mm-hmm. And it's written there that truly the Armageddon war has to do with the logic war. Now, what is a logic war? So there is a Kabbalist that lived in the northern part of Italy 500 years ago, and he said the logic war is actually the doubts, the doubts that we have when we found the right thing. Every time you're finding somebody that you think that your soulmate, you start doubting it. Everybody yes. loves to doubt something. Because if you don't doubt it, then the search is over. And if the search is over, then what are you going to do? You know? So that's actually, unfortunately, I have to say, that's unfortunately the Armageddon war. Every chaos that we see right now in the world, and unfortunately next year, when I say next year, I'm referring it to my tradition, which is Rosh Hashanah, mm-hmm. that will be on uh, 20 of, uh, of uh, September yeah. night. The shift of energy at that night will be for the people who don't speak highly of themselves, they will not find themselves among the, among the goodness that God want to give. But the people who talk good about themselves, they say, I'm great, I'm the best, I'm the chosen one. For them, it will be a great time. So remember, 2018 is belongs to the people with the ego, not the people who keep themselves small. The one who keeps themselves small for 2018, not only will be small, the universe will say, okay, you want to play small because you don't want to help too many people. So I'm not sure we need you. So I'm telling you again, the day of judgment is coming, but not the way we know it, in a way that we take responsibility and tell the world who we are. Yeah, Yeah, I love this. I'm so glad you brought up September 20th, though, because I want to talk about this with you, because there is this idea. Wow, you said so many things. First of all, you know, there are many of us that didn't get kind of the way we are overnight. We didn't get in, you know, stuck in our stuckness overnight. And yet sometimes we think that we are able to pull ourselves up, you know, suck it in, make things happen, and then get ready for what's going to happen here with this huge energy coming in on September 20th. I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those people. I am yeah. a person that has had I've, – I've chosen to seek out help all along the way. I'm never Great. done, but I'm not seeking for a thing outside of me. I'm seeking to know more about who I am mm-hmm. as it is – as I am relative to what is happening on the inside of me and the outside. And I'm not Great. very good about figuring that out myself. But isn't that what mm. you're helping people do all over the world? Yeah. I mean, the idea, the idea people need to know that I can help. I mean, I can guide and I can tell. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the benefit would be much greater if the people will stop their car, you know, and understand they found something or someone. People mm-hmm. have to stop with the searching engine. There yeah. is a disease right now happening in the world. Yeah. They call it either they call it organized religion, or they call it cult, or they call it spirituality. It doesn't matter what the name is; it's passé. It's over. It's over already in the '70s. But people mm-hmm. are writing on it because it's good. It's a good machine. A real sign of spirituality is when you stop yourself from searching. Finding is the name of the game, not searching. You want to find the truth, not searching for the truth. Because if you say, I'm here to search for the truth, what's your deadline? How long are you going to search for the truth? 40 years, 30 years, that's too much. You got to give yourself, let's say, one year. And after one year, whatever you experience, choose whatever the best for you. And trust me, if you're going on the wrong path and you're trusting the divine, the divine will put you on the right path. 
But if you're going on the right path and you don't trust in the divine, you will find yourself on the wrong path. So it's not about how much time you need to find the right thing. Is that searching engine, which is all 100% doubt and uncertainty, that will never make you find what you're looking for. But if you awakening your soul to have certainty about the divine, about the creator, about your soul that is part of the divine, then you're going to find the truth. You're going to find the answer. That's what I'm giving people. I'm giving mm-hmm. people the reins in their hands so the horses will not take them all over the place. Because once the doubts start to control you, your oh. horses are taking you to so many paths. And you start thinking, you're finding this and you're finding that. And you think, oh, my God, I'm into, right now I'm into this. And now I'm into this. Now I'm into this. And we know there is more teacher today than student. We know yeah. there is more priest than follower. There is more rabbi than student. There is more mask than there is people who want to go to the mosque. Why? Because the idea is people keep searching. And they even say, I'm not doing that, I'm doing this. You're going now to a, any restaurant. You hear people talking. Say, what are you doing? Say, I'm doing that yoga. Oh, my God, I'm done with that yoga. I'm into hot yoga. Hot yoga? <laughs> I'm done with hot yoga. I went to Kundalini yoga. Oh, my God, I'm done with Kundalini. Every day something else. Nobody <laughs> is committing to change. People are committing to the search. And the search has no spine, and that's sad, and that's what we experience right now. So what is the wind in Texas? What is the earthquake in Mexico? What is the wind in Florida? What is going on in Atlanta? There is a shaking going on around us to tell us, choose, and don't worry if you choose not well. Choose. Don't worry about if your choice is not perfect. Choose, and I'm here on the radio to let you people not just choose me or let me guide you. That's not what it's all about. It's about it doesn't matter whatever you work with me or you don't work with me. You just got to choose something that you can be committed to for the next five years. Because if you, you keep jumping every few months for something else, even if you have the right decision, it will turn to a wrong decision. And that's called, again, a day of judgment. I hope I'm clear because I'm repeating myself. It's so important for me. Because as I say, 20th of September, and they call it Rosh Hashanah, okay, people think it's the new year for the Jew, but actually it's not the new year. It's the birthday of Adam and Eve. Most people don't even know that. Most Jewish even don't know that. It's the birthday of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve born on that day. And the reason it's called Rosh Hashanah is because of that day, you can born again, if you want to say, but not born again Christian or Jew. It's a born again as a human. You're giving birth to yourself. So how do you want the next year to look like? Such a powerful day. Such a powerful day. It's a powerful yeah. day. And it's a powerful day. I want to talk with you about this when we come back. But before we do, listen, for those of you out there, if you're like me, you're going to think about how do I want to craft this upcoming year? What are the things that I need some help getting rid of? What are the things I want to bring forward? Uh, you can do this really easily. We made it easy. Go to uh, Eliao's website, which is contactej.com. Contactej.com. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what we do that limits, even with the invitation that Eliao just talked about, what do we do to put the limits What do we do to put the limits on? And when we come back, we're going to talk about what can we do to take the limits off God? Not that God's got any, but think about it. Our view of what can be given to us. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know 
how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step -step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com. Or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. In this day and age, if you don't reinvent yourself, you may never find balance, peace, and the sustainable life that is your birthright. Angela Watson Robertson, known as the Reinvention Warrior and the host of Breakthrough Radio Show Masters of Reinvention, is here to help you reinvent every area of your life. Tune in and hear from the best in the personal transformation business and discover tips and tools for positive change. Live every month on Transformation Talk Radio. Are you struggling in a relationship and deeply craving some tools and support to get things back on track? Do you crave having a loving, compassionate relationship with Mr. Right, but always seem to pick Mr. Wrong? Well, Sarah Luce can help. She's created a four-week online course starting September 28th that will teach you how to shift your energy and behavior to have new transformative outcomes. And you're going to get a personal one-on-one -on -one session with Sarah to ensure you get powerful, personal results. Sign up today at sarahluce.com. Have you ever said to a friend, I am trying to be less stressed, I am hoping to meet someone special, or how about I am working on getting a job I love? Hi, I'm Eve from Elite Tarot, host of the weekly show, Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. Words like hoping, wanting, and trying may seem innocent, however, they carry with them emotional weight that actually blocks energy. Next time you start to say these words, say instead, I am becoming less stressed. I am looking forward to meeting someone special. I am pursuing a job I love. While your brain may resist, note how your body physically feels as possibility of success suddenly appears. As an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader, I work with clients worldwide on using energy effectively to embrace joy. If you'd like to schedule a session, please visit my website at elitetarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. If you want to find out more about Ellie Algeon, my very, very special uh, co-host joining me here today, Mystic Living Radio, EJ and I. Uh, this is about deep spiritual wisdom, practical advice. Today, we're talking about Day of Judgment. For those of you that would love to call into the show, questions, comments, 1-800-930-2819. We would love to hear from you or go to TransformationTalkRadio.com. And on the right-hand side, ask your question. TransformationTalkRadio.com. You can ask your question. We'll get it on board. Um, you know, today we're talking about Day of Judgment. Again, if you want to find out more about EJ, if you want to go ahead and uh, work with him directly, lots of information on how to do that, go to contactEJ.com. Calm. Um, you know, before the break, we're talking about searching, searching, searching. And, it, you know, part of this, I know that the times that I've been searching in my life is usually been a point of avoidance. Um, the other part of it, EJ, has been that I, I, I'm, I'm searching because I want to argue for my limitations. And my limitations are based on the fact that I believe that the universe is limited. But this is not what you were talking about before the break. You're talking about September 20th. What are we going to hold in our consciousness about our lives, about our future, and about how big we can go? And I would love for you to, to talk a little bit about what it is we can do to give birth to ourselves as we move forward here in the next couple of weeks and leave our limitations behind. 
Well, as we know, um, this is the day that Adam and Eve were born. So basically, every year, we get a chance to give birth to ourselves. Now, to give birth to ourselves, it depends on what we did this year. So if in this year we judge people, we were jealous, we were angry, we have to first ask for forgiveness from them and ask for forgiveness from ourselves and from our soul for what we did. That's before we're walking into this day, September 20th. And then what we're doing, September 21st and 22nd, it's called the day of harsh judgment and soft judgment. Those are, will be on Thursday and Friday. Usually what I do, I lead my community here in L.A. and globally, but I can only do it in L.A. when it's come to Rosh Hashanah, and we blow the horn, which is symbolize the idea of removal of the judgment and the core of judgment or wherever the judgment comes from. And the idea that if you cannot be with us and doing it together with us, then join any community that you can find around you, most Jewish communities doing it. Not exactly they doing it with the right consciousness, but it's better something than nothing. But conscious-wise, what you need to prepare is basically things, what kind of year are you going to have? What is it that you want for yourself to be? Not how much money you're going to have, not how many people you're going to control, but what is it that you want actually from yourself? What is actually you want to see yourself like? I mean, you want to see yourself more patient, more forgiving, more kind. You know, what is the more things that you want to be in the next coming year? But remember, before that, on the day of September 20th, it's called the day of cleansing before you're born. As a woman going to give birth, you know, she has to go to some cleansing. She has to go to, to the doctors. This mm-hmm. is the day before. So the idea of the day before, you clean yourself. You clean yourself. You clean yourself especially from all promises that you had. You know, because when we promise that we will do this and this and that, we're getting credit for something that we didn't do. If I promised that I would be there and I wasn't, that's when I make a promise to be there and you give me credit that I will be there. But when you came to the area and you cannot find me there, for example, I say, I'll be in Seattle next week. Mm-hmm. And you waited for me and I didn't arrive. Right. That means you wasted your energy, your time, and I actually sent my soul there because I promised words as power, but my body stay here. So there is now a distance between my body and my soul because of my promise. Don't make promise you cannot fulfill. Mm-hmm. Not because of manners, because of spirituality. Otherwise, your soul is arriving to another area, and then your body is here. So on that day, September 20th, before Shoshana, you're cleaning those promises. You're cleaning that anger, that jealousy. And then you walk in Thursday morning, September 21st, you're in front of the angel, and you say, Dear angel, please write me in the book of life. Please write me in the book that promised that I will have one of the greatest year ever because I'm going to become a better person. You negotiate for your life. Because you're the one who can negotiate for your life. So the reason we say write me in the book of life in September 21st and 22nd, very simple. you got to give a good reason for your soul why your soul should stay here. Because people just want to stay another year and waste another time. But why do you want to stay alive? This is a big question that mm-hmm. you got to ask yourself September 21st and 22nd. Is your existence in this universe is important? I'm not talking about it's important because you have to make breakfast for your kids, you know, because everybody can be replaced. But come up with an idea. Why do you think you are important for this universe? And if you cannot find that idea, then sit and cry. This is a good time to cry. You can call that moment the day of judgment. You sit and cry because you cannot find a good reason what you should do. And if you have nothing that you find you you can benefit that world, this world, then I'm sorry, then go door to door and start giving cookies and cakes to people. Do something nice. Be kind. Go to people and say how much you love them in a supermarket. Change and give yourself and your soul a reason why you should continue to be alive and write yourself. You are the one writing yourself in the book of life. I hope that the short explanation helps some yeah. people. 
Yeah, it is. I mean, one of the things that I do, I work with, uh, you know, people that are, you know, coming out on the other end from addiction and recovery. And one of the things that is so important is when you're feeling like you don't want to live, when you're feeling like, you know, your life will not amount to anything. Uh, the number one thing we do is we start to, you know, be part of service. We start to look at how can we do something for other people? How can we go feed the homeless down in Seattle, exactly. let's say, exactly. right? And that exactly. is the quickest thing I know of to get out of yourself because that's exactly. part of this. That's part of the rebirth, isn't it? Exactly. If you don't have, find a good reason why you should be alive, I promise you, the angels and God himself will not find a good reason for you to be alive. But if you find a good reason why to be alive, and I'm not talking about taking care of your selfish needs and uh, your worker or your children, find a good reason that you want to benefit this world with. You know, it says that when a person is born, he's crying and everybody else is laughing. When a person dies, he needs to laugh and everybody else has to cry, meaning that we come to the world crying because we see how much job we have to do, but we leave this world so happy because we accomplish what we, did, what we came here for. But everybody else is crying because they're missing all the work that we did. That's how life needs to look like. So that's what you're going to think on September 21st, you know? Very important mm -hmm. day. You know, um, EJ, there are some people that may be listening that are thinking, I, I want a better life. I want a bigger life, but I don't know how to do it on my own. Tell us how you work with people to help them, because I've not been able to do this on my own. I mean, mm. I've really been able to say, listen, I'm really a little stuck right here. And I'm stuck here. It's affecting my relationship. It's affecting my business. It's affecting the way I show up in the world. Am I being kind and respectful today? You know, even when I'm scared and I'm angry, am I lashing out at other people? Or am I recognizing the goodness? Now, I'll tell you, today I can recognize the goodness. But I've really needed to do some work. How do you work with people? Because I know you work with individuals and I know you work with businesses. Tell us a little bit about that. And, of course, you have courses people can take. The idea, the idea is questioning. I mean, this is start with question. When I work with mm -hmm. people is, first is what do you want? Know what you want to have. But what do you want from your life? Second is what do you want to feel? What do you want to feel? Of course, you want to feel happy. But why? You know, the why, when we start asking all the why, then we start getting into something. And after that, then I give you some tools. And mm -hmm. when I give you those tools, you know, step by step, I'm helping you. You know, I wrote the book. It's called the Finding God Workbook. It's a very, very simple book, Finding God Workbook, that is good for 52 weeks. All what you got to do is it's a very simple book on Amazon or, or on my site, you know, EJ.com. And when you go through that, every week you read the paragraph and then you fill up the question. And then that book supposed really to be this simple, so simple to help you. Like if you don't have time to see me, you don't have time to see anybody. At least read books that like get yourself going. You cannot sit on the couch and waiting for a change. So if you don't know where to start, either call me, make an appointment. Or if you cannot do that, please get the book, the Finding God Workbook. If you cannot even do that, then what can I say? I mean, ask yourself, what do you want from life? And if you want nothing from your life, I, I'm not sure uh, that that's a good uh, thing. I think that you have to find mm -hmm. something to do. You know, you have to have a desire. I meet many times people who are in hospitals that are sick, very, very, very bad. And the right, first thing right. I wake them up is to want to stay alive. Yeah. That's the first thing yeah. for them. So once I yeah. pass through the idea that they want to stay alive after they suffer from cancer for so long, now we're talking about the next step. Okay, now let's see. So it's, it's go step by step for each individual is different. But first, my dear friend, what do you want? What is the bottom line? What is it you want? Okay? And don't look at what you want because you don't have it. Look at what you want because the universe has 
everything for you. Think about it. I mean, when when a child is going into an ice cream store, you know, they choose whatever flavor they want. But on the way to the ice cream store, they don't know what they want. You ask a kid, what do you want? I don't yeah. know. That's beautiful. But when we become adults and growing up, we always look for what we want because we don't have it. That's a wrong approach to life. A kid look what they want once they see what the universe has to offer. Look around you. There is so many things that you can have. But the question, what is internally, what is that you want to be happy? Why do you want to be happy? What is this driving you? Everybody want to be happy. But why? What are you going to add to the universe? And this is the first step I do with people is finding what they want, give them some tools, step by step, no big deal. And it's so simple. And, uh, I mean, thank God, you know, so many people that I help. And uh, I have to tell you that the, the pleasure for me is that people don't need me anymore. Meaning, after <laughs> I help them, I know. they're on their I own. Know. They're opening their site. They start teaching. I had a lady yesterday from South America, you know, in the middle of Venezuela where everything is going crazy. Mm-hmm. And I'm helping her to be one of the leaders of South America. And you will hear about her soon. And that's what gets me excited. You know, I'm trying to push them away for me. So they will go on on their own. And then they will have that amazing life that they can guide people. Because there are so many people who need help. And uh, that's that's basically what I do. Well, and, you, you know, you also do something that I love. And that is you help people to desire bigger to not yes. really put a cap or a limitation yes. on what they think they deserve, right? So we yes. have this idea that, oh, I, you know, I, I really don't deserve that, Eliao. I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And I don't know why the universe would be built the way it's been built to have this vast, unlimited source of energy for us to play small. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a blessing. To be rich, it it's a blessing to be healthy. It's a blessing to be beautiful. It's a blessing. Somehow, organized religion, cult, and spiritual organization, and I have to say spiritual organization because lately, spiritual organization called themselves spiritual organization, but it's actually organized religion. And the idea that they tell people to think small, they tell people that suffering is good, they tell people to diminish the ego is good. And I am one of the only spiritual organizations that tell people the opposite. You should have ego. You should think highly of yourself. Take care of your body. Take care of your beauty. Have a lot of money. Why not? Celebrate life. Because think about it. If God is our father and our mother and everything, don't you think God wants you to have everything? There's mm-hmm. a pleasure for God for you to have everything. So don't listen to people who are telling you Jesus, Muhammad, and Moses, and Buddha want you not to have. Because it could be that they want to have what you have, and that's what they're asking you not to have. To get out of this limitation consciousness and start having because there is so much and so much more for everybody. There is enough food, enough money for everybody. So think big. Yeah, I love it. Uh, thank you, Eliao. Thank you so thank much. You. For those of you out there, I want to make sure you know how to find out more um, about EJ. And, and you know, this is really kind of cool what we've been able to do here. You can You can go to the website contactej.com contactej.com what you're going to find when you get there is you're going to take a look and be able to see how you can work with him whether you want to take your business to the next level coming up here whether you'd like to have a soul reading um, whether you want to move through in a bigger way in your relationship uh, whether you want to become a leader All of the above, whether it's business consulting, meditation, soul reading, and much more. Uh, Eliel, thank you for today. Last question. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? I want to leave you with uh, don't sit and do nothing. Whatever minutes go by, do something. Just do something. There is no rest. You know, my master used to say there is only one place that you go to sleep. And this is usually after you leave this physical world. Then your body can sleep. But till then, don't rest. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Stop with that resting thing. And whoever tells you that rest is good and rest, don't rest. Because when you rest your body, 
your mind starts working. When your body is not resting, your, your mind is, top, is, is, is involved with giving, with sharing, with helping so many people. So your life will change once you're into sharing. That's what I want to leave you with, okay? I love it. Thank you. Thank right. you so very much. Thank you, thank you so thank much you so for the much. blessing. Mm. Thank you. Benny, thank you for pushing all the right buttons. And mostly thank to all of you. You are the best listeners on the planet. Thank you for your kindness, your generosity. Thank you for your absolute willingness to create a better world. We'll see you next time. Wow. Amazing. You were listening to Mystic Living Radio. Deep spiritual wisdom, practical advice with EJ. Eliyahu Gian. EJ's dedication to motivate and empower knows no bounds. When you visit vitaltransformation.org, you'll find resources and classes to help you to focus on the power within to cultivate a truly fulfilling future and a deeper understanding of yourself with limitless success. Don't wait. Visit vitaltransformation.org today and sign up for your private session with EJ, this mystical Kabbalist, spiritual advisor, coach, and teacher. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.